I'm Mike Edwards, the website is DIY Doctor and this is another video in our series of um, how domestic hot water works, domestic cold water, central heating etc and um, this one we're going to be talking about the gas supply to obviously a gas fired central heating system. Um, this is the gas meter, normally found outside so it can be read quite easily. Um, the gas man comes along and, and reads the meter for you. You can obviously read it yourself. Um, and these measurements are in this instance in cubic feet, which is the pretty standard method of measuring uh, gas usage. And the gas comes into the property through this pipe here um, and via this control valve. Now, an easy way of remembering how which is on and which is off when you get to these control valves is if you turn that down, you can see that the line of the valve is cutting across the pipe. So if you can imagine something cutting across that pipe, it would be turned off. It's blocking the pipe up. So to turn it on, the gas is then running in line with the pipe. So it goes through the gas pipe into this regulator. Inside that regulator, there's a kind of diaphragm um, system. And that reduces the pressure from the external pressure to the pressure required by a domestic system to operate um, properly and to maximum potential. Okay, so from the meter, it comes in through the diaphragm into the meter, runs through the clock, and then to the out pipe from the meter into the property. So the minute you turn a gas appliance on indoors, gas flows through this and starts the, the meter reading. There. So that can be that can be read at any time. You're sometimes asked to do. Uh, uh, temporary meter readings with the gas guy can't get out or whatever. Are they not? How, how does your bill work when the, when they do that? Is it? Uh, uh, it they measure it here in cubic feet and charge yeah. it in units. All oh, right. So you know you can work out according to their bill. It will yeah. tell you how much a cubic foot is in a unit. Right. And then how much it is so you can work out how many unit. units you work, and they yeah. tell you how much each unit is. So you That's can work. You can pr probably you work can, your bill out before yeah. you get it. Fairly, okay. fairly accurate. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you can. You know, because as, as with, you've probably seen our electrical video, um, you know, sometimes people uh, write in to the gas company saying that their bill is about three million pounds. Um, how can I check it? So you can, you can read the, the meter yourself, check it against the number of units, check the units against the cost per unit and work out what your gas bill should be. So we're gonna go from the meter inside straight to the, uh, because it goes from here to the boiler. Um, so we're gonna go inside and talk about the boiler and how that works. Having seen that the, uh, the gas comes into the meter and is measured the minute we start using it, we now come into its first port of call, which is the boiler. Now, I'm not gonna tell you a great deal about the boiler. Um, first of all, there are many, many different types of boiler. All, all you need to know as a DIY enthusiast or home improver is that you can't touch it. Um, all it is to us, mere mortals, is a water heater. What we're allowed to do with it is to turn it on and off and to adjust it to high or low temperature. That's all we're allowed to do with this particular appliance. The rest of it has to be done by somebody registered with the Gas Safety Council, used to be Corgi, um, and they will come and they will issue one of these. Um, it's not really important um, what it says on this, other than to note it is uh, a homeowner gas safety record. Your boiler is inspected, and if it passes, you will be given um, a certificate to say that it is safe, and that must be renewed. Um, the next gas safety check must be done uh, every 12 months. Uh, this one is actually due for another renewal now. Um, as I said, there's lots and lots of different types of boiler. Um, I'm not gonna go into that, and I'm not gonna go into the work. You're not even, as a DIY enthusiast now, you're not even allowed to buy the parts for a boiler unless you can prove that you are registered by the Gas Safety Council. Okay, having said that you mustn't work on this, you're not allowed to buy bits and pieces, etc. I need to explain that a little bit more thoroughly because it's one of the most often asked questions on DIY Doctor and from our research on most DIY forums across the UK. Um, why can't I work on um, gas appliances? Well, the, the, the legalities of the matter are that to work on a gas appliance, you need to be what is called competent. You need to be a competent person. Now, competency has a variety of meanings in the English language, um, but just because you can write down the word gas 
and possibly spell it correctly doesn't mean you're competent to work on gas. What competency means within the gas industry is that you are, have the ability to check the pressure of your gas before it gets to your boiler and then again once any work has been done you have the ability to check the pressure of the gas after the work has been done. You also have the ability to measure the drop or rise in pressure and know what that means to your system. That's what competent means in the Gas Safety Council. So unless you have those abilities, you are not competent to work on a gas boiler or any gas appliance within the home. So let's get the legalities right because you can, some shops will allow you to go and buy a thermocouple or some bits and pieces for the boiler. Legally, you can't fit them unless you're competent. And you may be asked to prove competency at some point if somebody comes to buy your house and there's quite obviously work being done on the boiler. And secondly, of course, if you mess about with an appliance that you shouldn't be anywhere near, and something does go wrong, you might well find that your home insurance isn't valid either. So my advice to you is, and that's why we're not telling you anything about the boiler, is leave it alone. Leave it to the people who know what they're doing, the people that really are competent. Um, you stick to your job, they'll stick to theirs, and everybody stays safe. Okay, now we'll move on. So we'll shut the, um, the boiler up because I'm not gonna tell you anything about it. Shut the front, and all we really need to know about this is that the gas from the meter outside is fed into the boiler through the bottom and the water flow and return so that's flow to the boiler and return to the heating um, is, is done at the top of the boiler and we'll go into that where a little bit later when we get up to the, uh, the control system in the airing cupboard um, when we explain a little bit more about how it works but the important thing to know is that you mustn't touch this other than to turn it on or off or allow it to be at high or low temperature. 